Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of truth and knowledge, welcome to a one-of-a-kind experience that will take you on a captivating journey beyond our world. Today, we have a special treat for you as we sit down with the renowned Andromedan contactee, Alex Collier. Prepare yourself for a rapid-fire question and answer session that delves into the depths of cosmic wisdom and unveils the mysteries of the universe. As always, please remember to like this video and share it with your friends and family. That way, it gets seen by more truth seekers. So, without further ado, here are today's rapid-fire questions and answers. Are we still going to make it? Did we stop the tragedy from happening? I hope so. Yes. Yes. There was no way that was going to fail. No way whatsoever. We're going to be okay. I, I just know we're going to be okay. It's just, it's, it just, it's, there are some days it's like walking on glass, you know? And there's other days where there's a lot of anxiety because, you know, we're, we're trying to make ends meet. We're stuck in a, we're all really good people stuck in a system that is corrupt and broken and has been for a very long time. And it's difficult to have the patience and sometimes the hope to wait for supposedly the fix to suddenly arrive because we're not being told about what steps are actually being taken or in process for the fix because we're in the middle of a war and some things have to remain classified. Some actions have to remain elusive because we're dealing with an enemy that's been entrenched for a thousand years or more. And some of them are us, but they have detached and broken away from humanity on an emotional level a long time ago. They're basically pure assholes. And then you have the non-terrestrial component of this equation where they've only looked at us as a commodity, as a resource, and have literally been feeding off of us for thousands of years. And that's a whole nother element, and that takes things to a whole new level. So when you combine all of that with the fact that you have, um, let's call them benevolence, and I include the white hats in that group, the benevolence moving forward and as they move forward to eliminate this threat and remove this element elements from the equation and at the same time are trying to figure out how to wake up humanity without causing all of this fear and trauma in them equally and, and i've talked about this years and years and years ago that's where we're at. We are in this process right now of removing this horrible element and at the same time awaken humanity to what has been going on, how they've been living, and at the same time try to figure out how do we empower these people to take back their sovereignty and their, their, their freedom to put their freedom and their sovereignty above all things and, the, and their love of creator, of God, of soul. It's a, it's a challenge. It's a real task. <clears throat> you know, and there's been moments where I've thought, well, maybe they waited too long to make this move. But I am reminded that we have come back in time to right a terrible wrong. When I remember that fact, 
it puts me back on course. It puts me back into that space. We're going to be okay. Because these civilizations that are here helping us and the white hats, the human, the Terran element of this program, uh, they're incredibly resourceful. They're extremely smart. They have had a lot of time to put this together. They know the enemy far better than we do. In many cases, they've worked with them. And the alliance, the non-terrestrial benevolent alliance, these are civilizations that are millions and millions and millions of, of years old. They've seen some shit. And they know some shit. They know what they're doing. They are successful. They are extremely successful. And they've got our back. We're going to be okay. We are. We're just going to be okay. It's just really hard because we're in the weeds. We don't know exactly what's going on. It's a tough spot to be in. It really is. But the one thing you can all do is work on yourself, right? You can work on yourself. You can take this time to work on yourself. That's a genuine investment, isn't it? Of course it is. Do the A's ever experience problems with fear or ego? Also, is there a beneficial purpose to these emotions? That's Lauren Wagner's question of the week. You know, I was always of the impression that they did not experience fear because I was taught that for us to experience fear means we don't have a clear perspective of our situation. But I did experience a situation where the first time I went on board uh, the mothership I, and there were children there, they, they did move away from me. And it bothered me more than it did them. And it wasn't that they experienced fear, uh, I was told later, but it was more about I was so strange to them that they moved away in order to get a different perspective or to observe me from, from a bit of a distance uh, as opposed to getting right up on top of me. And then I was told by Morinae specifically that, that they had been teaching them about our race. So, but no, I, I've never seen fear in them at all. Ever. I've, I've, but I don't know everything about their culture. You know, I don't. And as far as ego, you know, that's a whole other conversation in the sense that they are truly self-confident in who they are. They know who they are. Is that ego or is that confidence or is ego not confidence, but the fact that someone perceives themselves as better than others. Would that be ego, that they perceive themselves as better than everyone else? Now, if we were to go by that definition, no, the A's are not like that at all. Not at all. That is not who they are. That would be some ET races that are here. That certainly would be politicians. 
that absolutely is Fauci and Bill Gates. And many others of that ilk, you know, um, child traffickers, uh, you know, e ego can be incredibly destructive. But I don't know that self-confidence by itself is ego. I guess it's all in the presentation and, and the, the actual behavior of the person. You know, it's one thing to be totally confident in what you know um, and not be belligerent, but just to be comfortable stating your place where ego is is quite the opposite. Um, are they uh, perceived as the same? I think in some circles they probably would be. You know, that's a tough one. That's, that's really a tough one because we've had all these other people tell us what it is and what it isn't. You know, are we thinking for ourselves? Are we making those definitions for ourselves and those conclusions for ourselves? Or are we allowing other people to tell us what those things are and what they mean? Um, and the inherent danger in having someone else tell us is that it's their perception. It may not be our belief system at all. It's their belief system. And does it cause more division? You can, you can be in a relationship quite successfully for someone who's self-confident. In fact, it could actually help you gain confidence. You could also deal, have a relationship with someone who's very egotistical if you know exactly how to deal with someone who's egotistical. It doesn't mean that you cannot be successful in moving around people who are like that and still being successful and fulfilling your purpose. You know, it's, it's welcome to Earth, right? Hi, Alex. I heard a channeled message which suggested that three days of darkness would have to happen before we can see through the veil into four, five, six dimensional realities. It was suggested that the good ETs would have to stop Earth's planetary rotation for three days where we would finally see up through the higher dimensions and then the rotation would be reversed. It's also just suggested they would have to replace our moon, which I know that A's suggested many years ago. What are your thoughts? This is from RGF. RGF. I see you were negotiating to have people vote for your question. <laughs> you were working it. <laughs> uh, any and all things are possible. Do I know for a fact that that has to happen? No, I do not. Will that be what happens? It's possible. It's possible that they, they choose to do that. But we don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. Um, is it necessary to fulfill everything that's in the Bible to still get the exact same conclusion? No, I don't think so either. But we'll see. Um, uh, you're right about the planet stopping and then re-spinning in the other direction. That has happened in the past when the Biru, the dwarf star, or Copolis, has come through our solar system because its gravitational field is so strong that depending upon its entry point, uh, if we're spinning like this and it's coming in this direction, its gravitational field, its repulsion is so strong that it literally stops the planet and as it passes, the planet starts to spin the other way. So we'll just have to see. Um, if that occurs, then it's implying that Hercopolis is, is on its way here or is in fact here. 
and I have shared some video with some folks, but not everybody even bothered to ask for it. So, but that's okay. Uh, you know, a lot of people have a lot on their plate already. They they simply don't know how to process this a lot of this type of information, and, and that's okay. There is no point getting overwhelmed about any of this at the moment. You know, we just need to focus on what it is we can do, what we can control, what we can manage, and do what we have to do to get from today to tomorrow. Um, and just do the very best we can. And that's what everybody's pretty much doing, is the best that everyone can do. These are extraordinary times. There is no getting away from that. There is no denying that. These are absolutely extraordinary times. And, uh, you know, I joked on one of the earlier webinars about the sweatshirt, I Survived Earth. Uh, a young lady wrote me and said that she was going to make a shirt like that. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling they're going to be quite popular at the end of this journey. Hi, Alex. Do you think the Andromedans will be in touch soon? Or have they been in touch recently? Are they able to pick up on you wanting or needing to ask them something? Now seems like a good time for an update on where they see things heading for us. Thanks. That's again from Jane. Oh, by the way, am I fuzzy or am I clear? Are you asking that or is Jane asking me that? If you're fuzzy. I'm asking if if my uh, microphone is fuzzy or clear. You're you're clear. That's good. Clear. I'm, I'll stay clear. And so now on to Andromedans. Will they be in touch soon? Uh, Jane, I'm I'm not going to answer that question. I have a reason for it. But they're well aware of what's going on. We're we're in good, very good hands, and, and I mean that sincerely. We are in very, very good hands, and uh, there are many hands that are here, which is why I say that you know we're gonna we're we're gonna get through this. Humanity is gonna get through this, and we are going to be. What's the, how do I put this? We are going to be acknowledged by the entire galaxy for the journey that we've been on. And that is no small deal. That is no small deal. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting that How they see us is completely different than how any of us see ourselves down here. And I have to admit that there have been things that the A's have said to me about humanity that have made me blush because I, uh, I, I was simply surprised at the at the level of courage that they see us having, the depth of commitment and love and how deeply we have suffered here under this, this matrix of reptilian mind control. Not all, not many of them have ever had to deal with this the way we have. Some have in their distant past but most of the advanced civilizations 
They've not had anything like this, and they're watching this, and they're like, oh, my God. You know, they, they literally see us as some of the bravest souls to ever inhabit physicality. Not just here on Earth, but the other 21 planetary systems that were in a very similar situation. Some with the exact same beings. They're taken aback at the level of strength that we have to endear and endure living lifetimes after lifetimes under this, this type of tyranny. And at the same time, continue to bear children, to raise families, to dare to love one another, to care for each other, that when things are at their worst, we come together no matter what, to help each other. And in some instances, they're even very, very surprised at the level of brutality that we still show towards one another. So in many respects, we are a major contradiction. Which I guess to some of them is even more intriguing than, than not. We'll know. We'll know soon enough. Um, we will. We will know soon enough. It is more than likely that uh, Project Bluebeam is going to be used and that's all I'm, I can say at this moment but it's more than likely that it's going to be used um, because that's that's the last trick they have in their bag of bullshit Of what it's going to look like, I don't know yet, but at the minute I do, you'll know. So we can all anticipate what it's going to be, what kind of a show, so we can say, hey, that's bullshit, we know. Okay? I mean, we all want that kind of data. So, um, but there will be, there will be skirmishes out there. Hi, Alex. What is the relationship between the Archons and the Reptilian on Orion groups? Oh. Partners in crime. They're partners in crime. You know, they don't necessarily get along or trust each other, but they all have the same mindset. And they've all been forced together uh, at this particular point because they're all being attacked by benevolent races who are absolutely done with all their bullshit. But they don't get along and they don't trust each other. So whatever alliances they have you know, are only good in the moment. <laughs> They're only good in the moment. Will they last? Probably not. You know, the reptilians, they always, in the end, look out for themselves. They'll, they'll throw anybody and everyone else under the bus. So, you know, we can ultimately look for that to be the end result, that they'll throw everybody else under the bus in order to try to save themselves. And they will probably be the last one standing on the dark side before they're removed from the equation. And that's just what it is. You know, they're, they're, they're sealing their own fate by the decisions they continue to make and the actions they continue to take. So that's just what it is. 
I don't want to spend any more time on that, you know, because the more I talk about them, the more the more they focus their energy on me. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't want that anymore. Uh, I had to deal with that for years and years. What is the anticipated event that is going to occur? And is this something that we can prepare for? Well, that's an excellent question. There's plenty of rumors. Uh, I just gave you one regarding the fake second coming. One could be an alien, fake alien invention, uh, invasion. The other could be a nuclear, fake, almost nuclear holocaust, which I would never believe. Uh, because they're never going to allow us to use nukes. Uh, it could be a meteor, asteroid hitting the planet. There's so many different scenarios. Um, pole shift, I, I don't know. Any one of those things fit today's times. They really do. I, Carol K, I don't know. Any one of those things would work. You know, the whole, the whole idea of doing something like that is to distract your attention away from something else. So what is the something else that's going on that they don't want us to see and they want us to turn our focus towards something else. Because you know, both white hats and dark hats use that. They both use that. Alex, I'm confused. If higher dimensions still have the negative forces and wars with other species, how is that better or any different than Earth, aside from higher technology? Is there ever any peace? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I understand your question. And maybe I have failed to explain it better or to give you more enough information so that you could understand the difference. Uh, I don't think I need to give you an education on third density, so I won't even go there. But let's just talk about fourth, the little bit that I do know about fourth. You have polarities. However, those polarities rarely interact with each other. There are occasions where they do. You always know where that influence is because your spiritual awareness is uh, far more expansive than it is in third density. That's number one. Number two, your conscious awareness of yourself and your spiritual place in the universe is tenfold as it is here on third density as well. So you are far more aware and you are aware enough to remove yourself from situations that may or may not occur. Three, you have a completely different structural body type. You're talking third, three, four uh, uh, strands of DNA. Therefore, you have a longer life. The frequencies are completely different. Uh, third, den uh, fourth density, I think is 100 and... Um, So 103 uh, vibrational frequencies of light, somewhere in that area. It's, God, it's been forever since I've even thought about that. We are talking about a completely different realm than what we experience here. The key component is awareness. Everyone is still learning. It's not like you go to fourth density and it's 
you're on vacation forever. It's not what it is. There is still expansion. There is still growth. Um, there is still um, self-awareness and self-expansion. Those are all requirements, even in fifth and in sixth, but those requirements are the same. However, on fifth density, it's all about progressing the self and community, moving together as a soul group, a civilization in fifth density. And I mean a civilization. They would see themselves not only as family, but as a core soul group. Do you understand? They watch each other's back. They move together. They teach together. They laugh together. And they cry together. Everyone works together and moves higher and higher and higher as a soul group. In other words, you're in separate bodies, but there's no separation. I don't know how to explain it any better than that in third density. There you have it, fellow truth seekers. An enlightening and exhilarating rapid fire question and answer session with the remarkable Alex Collier, sharing his profound encounters with the benevolent Andromedan extraterrestrial beings. As we continue on our cosmic journey, let us embrace the wisdom of the Andromedans and carry their message of love, unity, and compassion with us. Together, we can create a world where humanity stands united, ready to embrace the wonders that await us in the vast expanse of the universe. If you found this rapid fire question and answer session fascinating, don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with your friends and family. Subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on more captivating content like this. Thank you for joining us on this incredible adventure. Until next time, may the stars guide you on your path of enlightenment and exploration, and remember to always seek knowledge and stay curious. If you would like to see Andromedan contact the Alex Collier live via video stream, we host an online seminar three times a month on a Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information and dates of upcoming online seminars, please visit alexcollier.org. Please click on one of the above videos to seek more of Alex Collier's knowledge.